this is Pokemon's theory. It's theory about Pokemon. All right, should, should, who, who wants to start off? Uh, I'm not sure how many I have. What do you want? <sighs> I don't actually have anything written down this time. This is just like the theories that I know or the yeah. things that I've thought of throughout the game. Uh, like a handful of miscellaneous ones. Uh, so if I remember, I'll like impose videos on this to like, like the pictures to show like the supporting evidence or whatever. So, like, for one of these, it's, like, basically that the, the, the Dratini line and the Magikarp line were, like, switched. So, like, Gyarados should have evolved from the Dragonair. And then, like, the, uh, what's it called? The Dragonite should have evolved from the Magikarp. Especially because in, like, Japanese mythology and stuff, like, the carp eventually becomes a dragon. Yeah, which would make more sense based off of, like, what I've heard, not what I actually know, like Japanese mythology. Plus yeah. the uh, the shapes of everything match up more yeah. that way. Like, I mean, what what makes more sense? A uh, Dratini forming into a like a, an orange dragon, uh, or this dragon dumb dragon, fish, or this dumb fat fish turning into the dumb fat dragon. Uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, the same for, like, the Caterpie and the Venonat line. Like, they switch them, but if you check, like, there's all these features on, like, the Caterpie and stuff that are, like, on the Venonat, and, like, the Butterfree it looks like it should have came from, like, the Venonat and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, how the eyes are exactly the same. Like, like Venomoth matches more to Caterpie and Venonat. <laughs> uh, let's see. The next one is that basically that, like, Geoponic... What about how Ditto is just a failed mute clone? Yeah, I have that one on my list, too. Um, I really like that one a lot because it makes, like, logical sense. And, like, their stats are similar, too. Like, they have a similar, like, almost exactly the same. Like, their stats are the same. Like, in, like, in a meta, in, like, a mechanical sense. Uh, it also explains yeah. why, like, the Dittos are all pink for no reason. Yeah, and they're the only two Pokemon that can learn every move. Yeah. Or learn the move Transform, too. I'm pretty sure Mew can transform, and uh, Ditto is the only other Pokemon that can also transform. Yeah. Also, both shiny forms are a light color blue. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that, too. I like the one that basically Giovanni wants the Master Ball to save the world. Have you heard about that one? <laughs> No, I haven't. Okay, yeah, basically, uh, like, he, like, captured or... Cr I think he, like, created Mewtwo and stuff. And Mewtwo, like, breaks out and is gonna, like, destroy or, like, take over the world because he's, like, an edgelord or whatever. And so Giovanni knows that, like, the only thing that can, like, capture Mewtwo is the Master Ball. And so the reason why he, like, invades Life Co. or whatever and, like, tries to steal the Master Ball is so that he can capture Mewtwo and, and like, stop him from destroying the world. So, like, by trying to steal the Master Ball, he's trying to save the world from, like, Mewtwo's wrath. Okay, so basically, like, he... Let's say, like, he... He tasked these scientists with creating the Master Ball, and they realized how powerful it was, but they didn't know why he wanted it. And they're like, oh, no, this is a crime lord. And the only reason that Mewtwo, like, wreaks havoc everywhere is because some dumb fucking child walked into a scientist lab and was like, hey, I'm gonna take this, even though it's not mine. Yeah, pretty much. Well, like, he's, I'm gonna save the CEO. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay. There's another one that says, uh, basically, the Johto dogs in, the like, Gen 2... They're, like, reincarnations of the EV triplets, like, the Rich Tridge. So, like, they are, like, the reincarnated spirits of, like, the, uh, what are they called? The Jolteon, the, um, the Flareon, and the, what's the other one? Vaporeon. Which is why they're yeah. the same types, and they look the same. And they're both dogs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's a story that, that sort of backs that up, too, that... Like Basically, like three unidentified Pokemon were in a burning 
blew over and like bestowed them with magical powers, and that's why there's only three of them yeah. instead of all of them evolving yeah. into the legendaries. Yeah, there's one in, like that's basically like Aerodactyl, um, basically eventually evolved into Zubats. So like millions of years ago, there were Aerodactyls, but like since then, like they've evolved into like modern Zubats. Kind of like how dinosaurs turned into chickens. I guess, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I could definitely see that. Okay, yeah. So there's an alternate like timeline theory uh, that basically goes like uh, Pokemon Emerald was like in the past, and then so like everything from Emerald up until the present day, and like so like black, white, and everything in between, like Diamond, Pearl, all those, like everything up until the present day, all of those were in the past. And then, like, the giant, like, Pokemon War, like, the Great War happened. And then, like, then it was yellow through Sapphire. So, like, it was, like, Gen 3 to, to Gen Present. And then there was the Great Pokemon War, which is why there are no, like, parents and all this kind of stuff. And, like, kids can roam free. Uh, and then there was Gen 1 and Gen 2. And that's the actual, like, timeline of the universe. Okay. That makes sense why Gen 3 is the first one where you have a father. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, in the one where you're in Hawaii, like, you have a mom and all this kind of stuff. And, yeah, so, like, that was, like, the distant past, like, in the timeline. Um, it's sort of how that one goes. There's another one I really like that's basically, um, like, the player characters are just robots. Like, everyone you actually play as, you're, like, an android. Like, you're not a real human, like, child. Like, you're just a robot. How are you a robot? Okay, basically, uh, like, number one, your parent doesn't care that you're going off on your own. Uh, number two, like, you can walk endlessly without resting. Like, you never stop and rest. Like, any plot hole like that, like, oh, why would a child be allowed to do this? Well, it's because they're a robot. Um, so, like... Yeah, they can walk without tiring. Um, you know, their parents don't care if they leave because they know they're indestructible and, like, all this kind of crap. Oh, and they never talk, either, so. Okay, so essentially to stop Skynet from taking over the world, they task their robot slaves with, like, getting rid of all of the creatures that could burn down their houses and shit. That makes sense. I could get behind that. <laughs> Yeah, there's the famous one where basically like that, that's, that's the, like exactly what scientists talk about doing with what's that? Oh, you kind of cut out. You kind of. Oh, out. I was just saying that it it makes sense because like sci all scientists say that like the only way to prevent AI from taking over the world is to task them with meaning meaningless things so that they're constantly distracted instead of realizing, like, how shittily we treat them. It was just video game. Uh, yeah. So, the next one is, like, pretty well known, which is basically that Sheldar and Cloyster uh, are, like, they die, and then their ghosts, or, like, their corpses are, like, possessed by spirits, and then they become, like, ghastly and haunted. And, like, Gengar is also Clefable and stuff like that. A fairy or whatever. Yeah, so that's that one. Also, uh, Genghis Khan, like the child in the pouch, is basically just a Q-bone. Okay, I've got a better one than that. Okay. If you actually take a baby Q-bone out of its mother's pouch, and it, uh, and like, it, they do it in the anime a lot. You can find pictures of it, and they're they're the wrong color, and they've got like stone markings on their body, and uh, their heads are the wrong shape for that. But you know what Pokemon fits perfectly for that, including the skull, which matches up with its adult version, where Kangaskhan's skull does not match up. Charizard. Yep. Cubone is actually a baby Charmander whose mother died, and because his mother wasn't alive to light his tail, he used the bone, like her skull, to protect himself, and that's where you get Q-Bone. A yeah. Q-Bone skull matches up almost perfectly with a 
with a, uh, a Charizard skull, like the shape of his head. And yeah. the body is almost identical. Even, even almost the color is identical too. Imagine a, uh, a charm, like a Charmander, if it was a fighting type instead of a fire type, it'd no longer be red. It would be brown, and then yeah. boom, you have Cubone. Or you know how like there are these like lizards who like eat birds' eggs and then like replace them with their eggs. But if it was like that, where like a Charmander yeah. kills the Cubone and then like sneaks into the pouch. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. Yeah. I only have one last one, which is basically that in the uh, PCs, uh, Digimon become, their Pokemon become Digimon when they're in the PCs. And so being inside the PC is the digital world in Digimon. The evolutions don't really match up, and I've never seen a gun inside of Pokemon. Oh, yeah. Or, alternatively, I, the Pokemon universe itself is the digital world, which is why things don't make sense there, or whatever. So I guess the PC would be a PC inside of the digital world. Or, what if Digimon is the future of Pokemon? Like, they captured all of the Pokemon, there's nothing left to do, so they were like, oh, we're bored of this, let's make a digital version where we get to create our own Pokemon, and they can have guns and wings and do all this crazy stuff that our Pokemon can't do. And that's why none of the evolutions look like their original state, because everyone who creates Digimons is like a 13-year-old nerd constantly programming new shit into their computer. Or... Uh... It's the like the digital world is just the future of the Pokemon world. Um, so basically, like it's like a Mad Max type apocalyptic future, like post apocalyptic future, but in Digimon. So all the Pokemon he's evolved to like absorb the guns and stuff from the war, and, like that went on, and like all the abhorrent violence that happened. Like they just integrated with all the mechanics and like the machines and the guns and the weapons. And, like, all the radiation from the nukes and stuff caused them to have these weird mutations, which explains why they never make any sense when they evolve. So, like, put this horrific spin on their evolution cycles. And it would also explain... It would also explain, like, in Digimon, they can evolve and then devolve. So they can, like, evolve to, like, their perfect form and then devolve back down to, like, rookie form or whatever. Or champion as it is, it's a whole thing. But so like that would also explain like the radiation or whatever, like destabilize their evolutions, which is why they can only stay in an evolved state for like a short period of time. So they can like digivolve up for like only for a little bit, and then they have to revert back to a more stable, smaller form. So like that could be a, a byproduct of the radiation. Yeah, and it makes sense now that Pokemon have the world. Oh, can you say that again? Yeah, it, it makes sense since Pokemon brought in the Mega Evolutions. They've already proved that Pokemon can evolve during a battle and then e immediately retort, like or go back to their original form. Yeah, so that's like the precursor. So that's like the like the origins of what would later become like Pokemon as we know them. Yeah, and then the Pokemon or Digimon or whatever became so... Like, the Pokemon became so dangerous to keep around that they had to put them in the PC and they couldn't let them out. So they had to develop a way for people to go into the PC and then they changed the name from Pokemon to Digimon because now they can only battle in a digital form. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It also would help explain why sometimes Digimon can come into the real world because they were originally meant to be in the real world. Yeah. And I guess I, mean, the, I don't know a lot about Digimon, but from yeah. you know, that all matches up. Yeah, and it's always a big deal when the digital world and the real world start to merge. And like the good Digimon always have to like merge together, like band up with the humans to like separate the worlds again. And that's because like people like the people in like in charge can't allow the worlds to become merged again because they know the Digimon are too dangerous and they want a whole human world only. 
So like that's why they always put a high priority on like re- like returning the digital world, like making it separate from the real world and stuff like that. Okay. And they basically tricked the Pokemon into uh, believing that the digital world is their original home, which makes a lot more sense in more ways than I think we realize because Digimon can talk. Uh, the thing that makes Digimon better than Pokemon is that they can talk, they can think, they're like sentient. They take crabs and actually eat. They're like real creatures. And it's pretty clear that Pokemon can learn how to talk, like Meowth or whoever. Like, I think we've mentioned some other ones in a different conversation. But, like, Pokemon are capable of learning how to talk. And so, like, the digital world is a world where, like, Digimon have, or, like, Pokemon have been allowed to actually develop. And so, like, that's why they can all talk and have personalities. Because there aren't, like, people, like, enslaving them constantly. Like, it used to be, like, in the original, like, Pokemon, like, the era when they would enslave them for dogfighting. Like, now they've been left to their own devices to, like, live on their own away from people. Like, they've learned how to talk and think and have personalities, like real sentient creatures. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That would also explain why... Okay, so, like, if we believe that all Pokemon are have the ability to learn how to speak English, then that would explain why in the games their sounds or whatever are just like random annoying screeching techno screams yeah. because that's what they sound like in the wild but the more they interact with human beings the more they learn how to talk which is why in the anime they can say their name it might be the only thing that they can say but that's them learning how to talk the kind of guy always knows their name or whatever yeah and then as time progresses into the future, they just learn to straight up talk. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Yeah. Didn't you have one about like Nurse Joy or something like that? Oh yeah, I've got a, I've got a few. Uh, we'll we'll get to that one though. I think I'm going to save that one for last. <laughs> uh, so, one of my theories is that Pokemon cannot breed because they're not actually animals. I think they are genetically modified creatures created by human beings to basically do their bidding. And that's why nobody has any problem with them dogfighting, because they're not real. It's like, it's the whole uh, Jurassic Park thing. You can't have, you can't have rights for an animal that doesn't exist. Um, But they were going, or they were having a hard time getting them uh, out for production. So what they did is they created Ditto as kind of a medium. So when you put them into the daycare and you run around while they're breeding, they're actually like working with scientists in that daycare to genetically clone your Pokemon, which is why you have to have two of the same Pokemon or a Pokemon that can turn into any Pokemon on a genetic level like Ditto. So basically Ditto is the factory version of robots building themselves. (laughs) Yeah, so when they go to the daycare, like they don't actually actually put in machines and they create the eggs like artificially, which is why you never see an egg just in like nature. Yeah. Which would also explain so there I don't know how um uh, I don't know how uh familiar you are with the newer Pokemon. Uh I think the Pokemon I'm about to bring up is like Gen five, maybe okay. Gen six. I don't I don't remember. I remember using him while I was playing, but I don't remember what generation he's from. Okay. Um it, it's Phantom, and it's basically like a little phantom with a tree stump on his head. And his Pokédex entry states, and I quote, These Pokémon are spirits of children who've gotten lost in the forest. And so there's a theory that goes around that says, like, oh, that that Pokémon isn't actually a Pokémon, actually the spirit of dead children who got lost in the woods. And... <clears throat> It would make sense in the form of them being clones if instead of that being a Pokemon that was created, that it was an actual spirit that they're using genetic modification to duplicate using clones. Yeah, that makes sense. 
Yeah. Because otherwise, how could a human soul turn into a Pokemon? It just doesn't make sense. I mean, there's that one weird, creepy thing, and I think it's uh, black and white, too, where you walk into the house, and there's a random ghost lady there, and then the screen flashes, and she disappears. I think she says some weird stuff to you. So that right there would prove that like ghosts exist, but ghosts aren't Pokemon. So how yeah. would you be able to... like? How would you be able to... Like capture a ghost, you can't. The only way you can capture a ghost is if you clone it with genetics and make it a, a like tangible object. So someone is ghostbustering ghosts, and then somehow like Doctor Moroing the spirits into Pokemon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's pretty disturbing. Like, yeah, it is. Kind of <laughs> it is really disturbing. So like, Which uh, I guess would bring me up to my next. I guess that makes sense. Like, what was what were you gonna say? Type, I guess that makes sense. How like all the ghost type Pokemon are like vengeful, angry spirits. Like they're all like spirits that were captured and then like, manipulated into some perverse form. Yeah, exactly. But I don't think there's multiple ghost type. I think there's only one ghost type. Okay. I think that Ghastly, Ghastly, and Haunter are all of the ghosts, and some of the electrical type. And we all know the theory of like uh, uh, an electrode is is just a Haunter that uh, like possessed a Pokeball. Yeah. yeah. And that's why it gets like electric type moves because Pokeballs run off of electricity. And I don't know how it works. I'm assuming they use like tiny watch batteries or something, but we know there's some kind of technology in there. So if you believe that, then you can believe that every ghost type is just a haunter or a ghastly possessing an item. Yeah. Like the 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 floating keys, the armor. Uh, the, the pumpkin one, like I was just talking about, like it's they can all just be, yeah, they could just be the the only ghost type that actually exists, like possessing those objects and then getting trapped in them. Or people could be forcing them, forcing those ghosts into those objects to create new Pokemon, like forcing them in there and then somehow using crazy science magic to to keep them from leaving and that would also give them a tangible a tangible body because i mean you, you have to think that that using genetics or cloning or modification or any kind of science to make a ghost into a tangible form is probably time consuming so yeah. instead they just take the ghost and put it in a tangible form and they're like yeah now you stay in there <clears throat> so like ghastly oh, okay. and stuff that enter like items that i think they're sort of like that as well but i think for like sometimes they basically go into stuff and then they don't know how to get back out so it's kind of like when a cat jumps on top of a refrigerator, like it climbs up like on top of a cat, like at the counter and finds its way up on top of the refrigerator. And then it's just like stuck there because it doesn't know how to get back down because it's retarded. So it's kind of like that. Like, I'm like, oh, I'm going to go into a, uh, this Pokeball. And it's like, oh, no, I don't know how to get back out. I'm stuck here. So it doesn't remember how to leave. So it's just stuck there forever. Exactly. <laughs> that would make sense. That would also explain a lot of stuff. Um, another thing that is involved in the whole ghastly thing is that I think that because scientists have genetically modified this ghost, yeah. that every time it defeats a Pokemon, it takes some of its life force, but not killing it all the way, which is why you can revive your Pokemon, but it takes some of its life form and it slowly uses that life form to build a physical body, which is why you go from Ghastly, who is completely gaseous, to Haunter, who is somewhat solid enough to lick you, to Gengar, which is an actual physical being that you could, like, poke and touch. So it's slowly, like, gaining XP, but yet... It's, like, it's, it's trying to rebuild the body. It's, like, building... It's, like, slowly, like... Uh, yeah. Did you ever watch Office Space? Basically, like, there's this guy in Office Space this like program and it like he puts it into a bank account and it like shaves off like fractions of a percent off each like transaction in the bank and then like over like the course of a year there will be like thousands of dollars in it or whatever because he's like shaving a fraction of a penny okay. off and they don't like 
count that or whatever in the story. Is that the one where they wake up the next day and they have like a billion dollars in their account and people are chasing after them? Yeah. Okay, I have seen that. That movie's awesome. Yeah. yeah, basically, like, yeah, it's like that, except like in this context, like they're shaving off like bits and bites of like physical matter or like something. And so they're just like amassing it very slowly, like bit by bit, until they can slowly build up more solid and solid like states of matter to like create a new body, basically. Yeah, exactly. It's not enough to like permanently um, like make, it's not enough to like permanently take from whoever they're taking from, but it's like enough that they can slowly collect enough matter to solidify over time. Yeah. They're just trying to rebuild a new body. Which would also explain why it looks like a Clefairy. Yeah. It's just trying to rebuild a fairly simple looking Pokemon. Sticking on the, uh, the theme of dead things, uh, do you know what a Mimikyu is? Yeah. Pretty terrifying. <laughs> yeah. So basically it's a dead Pokemon that dresses up in a, Poke or in a Pikachu outfit because nobody loves its real form. What if it's actually just like a haunter or something underneath that little blanket? Because it's a ghost, and most people don't like ghost types. They find them creepy, especially in the anime and shit like that. Like, no, nobody ever uses those kind of Pokemon unless they're a bad guy. Yeah. Uh, so what if the ghost that is pretending to be the Mimikyu is actually a dead Pikachu? And it wants people to love it like he, like they used to love him back when he was alive. So he puts on the costume to pretend to be who he used to be. Okay. Yeah. That's sad. <laughs> yeah, that's depressing. Yeah, I realize that most of my theories are pretty... <laughs> I mean, yeah, they're better. They're sadder, but... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I like that one. That okay. Was, sounds like the rating or whatever. Like the, the Pokemon version. And then I, I had a couple that like everyone knows uh, how like you kill you kill Gary's Ratatat. Like Red kills his Ratatat. Yeah. And that's why he's in the graveyard. Yeah. Uh, and he never has that Ratatat again. Yeah. But I guess I think that's all of the ones I have except for my Cruda de Gras, the, the big the big finale, which is ties into a bunch of other things. We've already had we've already had the conversation, but I want to talk about it again. It starts off with saying that Nurse Joy and Officer Jenny are actually Pokemon, which is why they look completely identical no matter where you go. They have a giant family, and there, there's no possible, like, physical way that a family, a, a real human family, could have that many identical twins from different mothers and different fathers, yeah. which means that they have to be Pokemon. And it makes sense because, like, one of the big things that they do, they, they work with. Uh, like Clefairy and Chansey and things like that because they're all healing Pokemon, which would make Nurse Joy a healing Pokemon. Yeah. Which is why she's the only person or I guess not person that uh, that people trust to heal their Pokemon. And we already know, we talked about how Meowth can learn English that Pokemon can actually talk. Yeah. So... Those two people are actually just two different Pokemon that the society itself has tricked into believing that they're real people to help them out. Or maybe they, maybe they know their Pokemon. Maybe we just don't know their Pokemon. Yeah. And, yeah, so that's the beginning of that, which I think makes a whole lot of sense. But that would also put us into a territory where that means that people could be Pokemon, yeah, like people so, are themselves a Pokemon, but they just don't recognize it. Like how stupid people think that humans aren't animals when we're also animals, like that kind of thing. Like they think that because they're more evolved, they're not Pokemon as well. But like they're also Pokemon, they just don't classify themselves as Pokemon. But like an alien would be like, oh yeah, that's a Pokemon, that's human type or whatever. Yeah. 
which would make humans a a normal type Pokemon with a very shitty move list, which is why they have to enslave other Pokemon to do their bidding, because they're just not powerful enough to do it themselves. The only thing that would make more sense than a normal type would be a psychic type Pokemon, who is constantly, like, forcing the Pokemon that are enslaved to them to think that they're friends instead of slaves, which is why all Pokemon seem to be happy with fighting each other and then going back to the person that said, hey, go almost die so I can win a, a badge. I think humans would be dark type Pokemon because we're so evil. But yeah, I definitely get that. But it would also explain why Ash has been trying to become the best Pokemon trainer ever to live for the last... Well, Pokemon came out the same year that I was born, so 26 years. And he's never aged a day in his life. Because humans don't fight, which means they don't get XP, which means they can't evolve. Which is also would explain why there's not very many adults in the universe. Yeah. Ash is too stupid to use an XP share on himself, so he physically can't evolve into his adult form. Which is why he's That's why he's ever. perpetually a child. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Like, he doesn't know how to train, right? I guess that would also help explain why people are okay with kids going out on their own and having adventures, because, like, the grown-ups know that's the only way for them to get XP and, like, grow into adulthood. So, like, they want them to go out and get XP to, like, evolve into, like, grown-ups. So they're like, okay, yeah, go, have an adventure. You're not going to evolve at home. Yeah, exactly. It would also kind of explain why Pokemon are less afraid of them. Like, Pokemon fight in the wild, but once they're put into a community, Pokemon become friends with each other extremely easily, which would also explain why Pokemon become friends with humans really easily. And I mean, the same logic applies to our universe, where we are... I mean, we're, we call ourselves humans, we don't classify ourselves as animals, but we, we are, we're just animals, which means the humans in the Pokemon world are just, they're the same thing as Pokemon, they're just more evolved Pokemon. Yeah. Well, well not evolved, be... like, in the Pokemon sense, like, like yeah. they're smarter. Like, somehow they've either advanced more than the other Pokemon, or they found a way of repressing all the other Pokemon. So they can't, like, learn to talk and think as highly as they can. Like, Pokemon can't do math, as far as I know. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know if Pokemon can do math. I just remembered another theory that I had, and I wanted to save this. I I wanted to save the one we just did for the last, because I thought it was the best one I had. But I just remembered another one, and I can't, can't end the video without me bringing it up. So... Pokemon in the anime and Pokemon in the games don't work the same way. Okay. And we know that it's the same like it's just something that we accept just like Yu-Gi-Oh and Digimon and all, all that crap. Mm-hmm. Um so what if Pokemon the video game is actually just us messing around with the Pokemon inside of the PC of the Pokemon world? They're the retarded, dumb Pokemon that nobody wants, and that's why they can't talk. They just make res- they just make dumb screech noises. It would also explain uh, like how we're actually playing the game as a person, like in in reality, like we are playing on the PC that has all the Pokemon in it. It would also explain shiny Pokemon as just being a glitch in the system, where they're not actually shiny in real life. Yeah. They're just like they're just normal Pokemon, but the computer has sensed an error. It would like also explain the like, missing no. Yeah, like a bite was coded as one instead of zero or something, so now its color is an odd shade. Yeah. And to keep us playing, they put Pokemon in the PC in an artificial form, like all of the legendaries, which would explain why you could get online and have two Kyogres fight each other. Because in in reality of Pokemon, there's only one Kyogre, and nobody owns it as far as I know. But in the game, everybody owns it. Because everyone's like, oh, I want a piece of that, so 
I'm just going to type in this code into my Pokemon PC, and then boom, I have a fake Kyogre that I can use in these fake battles with the Pokemon that nobody wanted. Like in Pokemon, in the world of Pokemon, they have the PCs, but of course you only put the, the Pokemon you don't want in the PC. So then they made a video game of Pokemon in Pokemon that uses the Pokemon in the PC. Is that the gist of it? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Well, okay, well what if that's like one version of Pokemon in Pokemon, and the second version of Pokemon in Pokemon was Digimon? So like, there was like, oh, there's Pokemon the game in the Pokemon universe. And there's also Digimon the game, which is the really retarded Pokemon that were too retarded for the PC, and we put them in a separate PC, and we added, we like, Moreau-style grafted guns into their arms. So have fun with that. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, because the more layers that you add into something, the more problems there are going to be digital version. So, yeah, yeah the Pokemon... We we put the Pokemon that are in the PC, and we put Pokemon from the PC into a second PC, and those Pokemon become digital mistakes inside of the PC, which cause them to evolve into Hell Angels with machine guns. So all the shinies uh, get repurposed and like moved to Digimon, basically. Yeah. Okay, so like in the actual Pokemon world. Um, like, the Pokemon can all talk, or, like, at least smart. Like, all the ones that just go, like, they go, oh, that stupid Pidgey can't even say Pidgey. Yeah, put him in the PC. And so, like, that's, yeah. that's why in the anime all the, uh, all the Pokemon know their names, because they, like, Hitler-style beated out all genetic imperfections in their view and put them into... So they basically holocausted uh, Pokemon, but instead of like, putting them in gas chambers, they put them in the PC. I mean, that's a pretty dark way to think about it, but yeah, yeah pretty yeah, much. It seems pretty, exactly uh, like what happened. They basically did do uh, Pokemon that they thought were unworthy or like Slither and wants to do to Muggles. <laughs> yeah. They're like, I have arbitrarily decided you're not good enough, so like we want you out of here. You're messing up our like utopia. Yeah, they're like, oh, you can't even say your own name. Like, you can't say what we named you. We don't want you out here. How are we supposed to know what Pokemon you are if you can't tell us every time you open your mouth? Into the PC you go. Charmander's like, but my name is Fire! Yeah, no, your name is Charmander. Charmander. Ah, get in the PC! It's like that scene get from Bruce, where he's like, your name is you Toby. And he's in the... It's like a scene in, like, Roots or whatever, where he's like, you, like your name is Toby. And he's like, my name is uh, Mabuto or whatever. Um... Makuto, I think his name was. He's like, your name is Toby! Whip! And so, except it's a Charmander, and he's like, my name is Wah! And they're like, no, your name is Charmander! Get in the PC! My name is Wah! <laughs> Get in the PC! Get in this ball! Yep, that's exactly what happened. That's, that's how the Pokemon universe works. And then once they distorted it, because they became digital uh, information, then they were like, oh, this little, this uh, retard Digimon, or retard Pokemon became even more retarded. Like, his bites are all corrupted. Like, they basically just took all the missing nose and put them into a separate PC server, and then that became Digimon. When they like, like Yeah, and then they eventually yeah. evolved into what Digimon is now. Yeah. What if... They also put human type Pokemon into that Digimon PC, and then they, they, they created two like sub servers in the Digimon game. One is the, the human world, as it's known in Digimon, and the other is the digital world, as it's known in Digimon. So, like all the events of Digimon, both in the real world in Digimon and in the digital world in Digimon, or in that Digimon like master server in that game, which is in fact in the real Pokemon universe. This is like Inception, like the Pokemon so game, you know, basically. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around how many layers we're at at this point. We are, you know, we are a world, basically Digimon is a world within a world within a world within our world. Holy crap, yeah. So everything's related, nothing matters, and I don't even know if we accomplished anything with this conversation or not. I just feel bad for playing 
now. <laughs> All right. Before we before we ruin Pokemon for me anymore, should that be should I be the end of it? Color changing cup? Yes. Absurd. Nice. And that's your gamer cup. This is a half a uh, I'm trying to remember what it is. I think it's a half a cap. Okay. I don't think I had to do this, but I'm spilling water. <laughs> Your screen froze. <laughs> <What? laughs> I know you were trying to show me the color changing, but like you were pouring and you stopped moving, and then the next thing I saw was the glass up against the thing. First, we go to Liz's, then we go to Mum's, we kill Phil, then we go to the Winchester, have a nice pint, and wait for all this to blow over. <laughs> 